Well, hello guys and girls out there, wherever you are. Welcome to another totally random weekly video. And in today's video, I want to count down my top five most favorite dark ambient artists or projects. I am fully aware that there is a lot of really successful and really talented artists out there. But, you know, this is not about who is really actually the most successful artist. It's just my personal favorites at the moment. And I'm also doing this list because I hope that you can discover new artists and new talents this way and discover music that you might have never heard of before. So yeah, let's get to it. By the way, links to all those, all the music is down in the description. Number five, list mode. Well, I think it is only appropriate to start this list with the person who is kind of responsible for the term dark ambient. Yeah, when Lust Mod started making music, the term dark ambient didn't really exist back then. So to many people he is kind of the godfather of dark ambient, even though he himself doesn't really think that his music is quote unquote dark. Um, the significant thing about his music is the use of really strong basses and extremely low frequencies. That also means that you need really good speakers to listen to his music and fully enjoy it. Because if you have speakers that are too small or too weak, they cannot really produce those low frequencies and therefore you would only hear half of the music and miss out on a lot and that would be a total shame. If you want to experience his music the way it's supposed to be experienced, you should definitely go and check him out live. It is an experience, I can tell you that. I mean, sometimes the whole building is shaking louder than the music itself. There was also a concert where Lustmod told one of the technicians to turn down the volume a little bit because his eyes were vibrating so much that he couldn't see what he was doing. So um, that gives you a rough idea of how exciting it is. Also a fun fact, uh, Lustmod provided the music for the 40th anniversary of the Church of Satan. Yeah, he got approached by the Church of Satan and they asked him if he could provide the music for their uh, 40th anniversary ritual and he was only too happy to agree to that. Not because he's a Satanist, he's actually an atheist, but he did it because it was such a rare occasion and he thought it was just a lot of fun. Number four, Lucilia. Lusuria quickly became one of my personal favorite artists and also one of the most popular artists at the Hospital Productions Rooster. His music can be so different because he always switches between dark and bright. So it's kind of a yin-yang thing maybe. Um, his music can be both dark and sinister and creepy, but also really fantastic and magical and beautiful. And when you listen to his music, you can't stop thinking about listening to some kind of a soundtrack for a really dark fantasy movie. So you should definitely check out his music. I recommend that you start with the album Ghost Entanglement because this is one of his best works, but pretty much everything that this guy does is really absolutely brilliant. Number three, Rainforest Spiritual Enslavement. Well, this one isn't really 100% dark ambient, but there are definitely a lot of cool dark ambient elements in this music. Um, actually, there is not really a real term for this music yet. 
somebody once described this music as spiritual, ecological, industrial music and that sums it up pretty good. It's music with uh, distorted field recordings and jungle sounds mixed with drone elements but also sometimes noise elements but it's still very very incredibly cool and it's also really creepy well many times it's not the music itself that is creepy it's mostly the titles of the tracks that are creepy and those titles they always deal with things like evil spirits that live in the rainforest or witch hunting which is unfortunately still a thing in some parts of the world and there is also one song that is called upside down left eye and left eye was the stage name of lisa lopez from tlc and she died in a car accident in honduras and she actually thought that she was chased by evil spirits because before she died in a car accident i don't know if it was a couple of weeks before or a couple of months before but she was a passenger in another car that accidentally hit and killed a little boy and the boy's last name was also Lopez and he was also wearing the same shoe size as Lisa and ever since that time Lisa believed that the spirit that tried to kill her accidentally killed the little boy instead so yeah that's pretty creepy and that's where I there is also a rainforest spiritual enslavement song called in Honduras death caused by being chased by spirits and there is also another creepy thing about the album black magic cannot cross water because it is believed that the field recordings on this album come from a box of cassettes that were found at a market in Port Moresby I hope I pronounced that correctly and it is thought to be that those cassettes were recorded by some Christian missionaries or whatever in the 1980s and that it was recorded shortly before they mysteriously disappeared. I don't know if that's true, it sounds a little bit too much like Blair Witch Project, but um, it's definitely kind of creepy. Uh, the person behind Rainforest Spiritual Enslavement is none other than Dominic Fairnow, the guy who is also known as Prurient or Vatican Shadow and who is also the owner of the Hospital Productions label. So you should definitely check out this music. I highly recommend that you start with the album Black Magic Cannot Cross Water because this is really some brilliant dark ambient. Number two, North End. Don't let the lack of cool and interesting information about this artist fool you. This is definitely one of the best, most brilliant ambient and dark ambient artists that I ever came across. Uh, his music varies from time to time. It can be really dark, creepy and sinister, but also really extremely beautiful and Overall, his music is also very, very cinematic. He's also one of the very few artists that is using acoustic instruments, such as strings and acoustic guitars and piano music. So it's also sometimes very emotional and very touching. And you should definitely check it out. I mean, his first release, The Ominous Silence, even though it has been his first release, it is always already a dark ambient and ambient masterpiece. And yeah, I also purchased the album uh, The Barren Lands. And you know, it's awesome when you love every single song on an album. So 
you should definitely check him out it's definitely worth it you won't regret it it's absolutely brilliant music number one templum nr templum nr that stands for temple of nightside revelations it's an anonymous music group from finland and they are relatively new to the oral hype nox rooster but they quickly became my most favorite music project because it's oral hype nox you can probably already tell that it is some kind of ritual dark ambient but they also use a lot of electronic elements and electronic beats which makes this music very unique and I think that's also why it is so appealing to me. But I also love the overall experience of Templum NR. Uh, there is absolutely no official presence of Templum NR anywhere on the internet. And inside every release there is a subscription form that you can fill out and send to Templum NR along with 20 to 25 and maybe even 30 euros depending on where you live and this way you will receive traditional paper mail newsletters as well as exclusive photos, exclusive artworks and sometimes even exclusive cassettes and you also get a lot of background information about their projects and their videos and the newsletters they just don't read like traditional newsletters they read like journals which is really cool so yeah i recommend that you check it out you won't regret it and yeah that's it for the moment and i see you in the next totally random video bye